Hey, welcome to the early show. The panel on duty for this one is Derek Dugan, uh, Bobby Moncur, Paddy Crerand, and Malcolm Allison. We also have an exclusive interview between Sir Alf Ramsey and the Scottish manager Willie Ormond on the eve of perhaps the most important match Scotland have ever played, the one against Yugoslavia. We look at the West Germans and are the favourites wavering a little on the eve of their game against the East Germans in spite of goals like this one. Ernest, Ernest can cross it, does so. That's two. Kuhlman, Ben Kuhlman makes it two. And why is one of the greatest midfield players in the world, the great Gunter Netzer, unable to get a place in that West German team? And also, we hope we've got it lined up for you. We should going live, we hope, uh, to, uh, to Germany, rather, to talk to four of the Scottish lads who will be out there battling against the Yugoslavs tomorrow, to uh, Billy Bremner, David Hay, David Harvey and Joe Jordan. We're keeping our fingers crossed and hoping that uh, those pictures come through in time. We shall also be, of course, looking at some of your letters as usual. But first, the news, which really is cheering news for Scotland. It is that Willie Morgan is fit, uh, that foot injury has cleared up, and Scotland will be unchanged uh, for that match against Yugoslavia. Well, of course, they know they must win it to be absolutely sure of surviving in the competition. And it's a tense time, really, in the Scottish camp. Even so, Willie Ormond was glad to be able to relax for a little while with the former England manager, Sir Alf Ramsey, in Germany, of course, with the ITV team, and with our Scottish reporter, Arthur Monford. They covered a whole range of subjects, but first of all, they talked about referees. Uh, the best performance I've seen from uh, the five matches I've seen was from the Welsh referee, Clive Thomas. He had an extremely good match. But since then, I've noticed uh, a deterioration in the standard of referee. The two, uh, the, the two recent matches, uh, one controlled by uh, a Dutchman and one from a Russian, <coughs> whilst they've started well, they, yes. they've, they, they've yes. so, sort of lost control of the match. And I think yes. probably uh, I've noticed exactly the same thing that happened in Mexico, in that referees are becoming much easier, more easier, the longer the competition goes on. Yes, it seemed, it seemed a bit odd to me, though, that the, the Scotland-Brazil game should have been handled by an official who had maybe, what, four or five international matches to his credit. That, that does seem a bit unusual at this stage. Well, it does seem a bit unusual, but uh, uh, mm -hmm. I wonder how many matches this man mm -hmm. has actually refereed. It yes. would be interesting to find well, out. Well, you have commented, I think, Well, on this, this one, we've got the referee we have on Saturday's game is a Mexican, mm -hmm. and he has only refereed, uh, I think it's nine international matches. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be a... I think it'll be a strong uh, physical tackle, tackling type of game against Yugoslavia yeah. from both sides. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to take a strong referee, and, and this could turn out to be one of the best games in the tournament, if that, handled properly. Yes, I was going to say, that really brings me to the last point, the question of, of the Yugoslavian match. Um, there's been so much, uh, so much at stake, really, for Scotland here, Willie. Uh, how difficult is it going to be for you to get your boys to sort of climb another mountain again, as it were, on Saturday? Well, I've always found out uh, with my boys, since I've taken over in this last mm -hmm. year and a half, that uh, I find that when they've got something to do, something to attain, mm -hmm. they go about their job and uh, they go on with it. They've done it against, uh, we had a hard game against uh, England at Wembley when they went the no scoring game. And uh, then Czechoslovakia and uh, West Germany, the boys turned it on then. They turned mm -hmm. it on for us at Hamden against England. They turned it on against Brazil. When there's something to attain, that we seem to get the best out of them. Mm -hmm. So on Saturday, I, I think we'll rise to the occasion. How, how do you see it, Al? I think they will uh, rise to the occasion. Whether they're good enough or not remains to be seen. But having uh, enjoyed their performance against Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, I can see uh, a great deal of improvement in the team, uh, a great deal of improvement in the confidence of the players. After all, it, it appeared in the match against Brazil that the, the, the players felt, oh, we're playing Brazil. They're such outstanding players. I think they were going back to 1970, uh, <coughs> the 70, 1970 World Cup competition, 1962, 1958, yes, and so on. Yes. Once they got the, the, the out of their minds the name of Brazil, then they settled down, played confidently, and played extremely well. If they mm -hmm. can repeat that performance uh, only from the uh, from the beginning of the match, then I think that if you're in with a chance. You've always got a chance, and I think they have a chance. I was going to say, Alf, uh, you, you saw Yugoslavia in the flesh. I think you saw it on the box, really. Yes. Um, is there anything, perhaps, that uh, in the Yugoslavian performance that we might be able to pick out, having seen them yourself? That they might help, Willie, yeah. Yes, they, they are a good team. It's a, it's a team that's been together uh, for some time. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, it's a team that consists of outstanding players from uh, the bigger clubs in Yugoslavia. 
a, a, li a little man or a man with the num name of Oblak was outstanding in the match against Brazil. He plays in midfield. Mm, that's right. yes. he's, uh, he's a left-footed player, but, play, uh, but works usually on the right-hand side of the midfield three. Another, uh, the other little man in midfield, Asi Mavic, mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's a very good player. And of course we have Jardis, the, uh, the, the left wing, an attacking player. player. So he's look, yeah. a brilliant player on the ball. Yeah, they they work team. hard, they, they can be physical as well as artists. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and their performance, uh, their performance against Brazil was, uh, was a first class one. So instead of Jairzinho and Riverino, you now got to put in all black and the other names to start, well, to start we, coping we know, with them, will you? I think we know where the danger lies, and uh, mm. I don't know, we hope not to give them the chance to do anything, but it's going to be a very difficult game to win, I know this. But so we, we know the players. We did talk uh, together when we saw Yugoslavia play Spain right. in, uh, here in Frankfurt. Yes, that's right. And, uh, and, uh, I wasn't impressed by the performance of the Yugoslavs at that particular time. They did a bad time. first half, I thought. Sorry. They did. Yes. They did. Uh, looking at the Yugoslav team, they have played extremely well. They've got two mm -hmm. very fine results. But yes. Uh, they're a very good side. I mean, uh, the left winger is a marvellous player, as far as I'm concerned. And we'll need to have a weary eye on him. Uh, but uh, I think if my boys can rise to the occasion and turn on the, the performance, I know they can play. And. Um, I think we'll shock them. Well, I'm Some fascinating football talk there then from Willie Ormond and Sir Alf Ramsey. I'm glad to say that the pictures are beginning to flicker through from Germany. Uh, there has been a fault on the line. I hope it's going to get better now. But we're going to take a break now. And after that break, even if we haven't got the pictures, we're going to talk in sound only to those four Scottish stars in Germany. So stay right with us. Welcome back to you. Uh, as I say, an unchanged Scottish side facing the Yugoslavs tomorrow, and this in fact is the team, uh, with David Harvey in goal, Jardine, Holton, Buchan and McGrain in the back four, Morgan, Bremner, Dalgleish and Hay, and the two fellows up front who we hope are going to get those goals tomorrow, Lorimer and Jordan. We're still working desperately hard to get those pictures through live from Germany, but uh, we thought it might be a nice little idea to have our own little phone-in with the uh, Scottish players in sound. Billy Bremner, do you hear me? I hear you, Brian, yes. Bill, uh, Willie Orman, when setting this up, he said, I don't mind in the least you talking to the lads as long as you make sure that it keeps nice and relaxed because we are so relaxed here today. Do you not feel in any way tense about this important one tomorrow? No, not at all today, but uh, obviously tomorrow we'll feel a bit tense. But today I feel great. Do you? Super. Do you have the feeling that, that the side is coming to the boil nicely at the right time? You're getting better all the time? Yeah, I think so. I think we're improving all the time. Uh, we've only lost uh, one game in the last four or five games, like you know, which has been very good, considering we've played two of the best teams in the world in England and Brazil. You know, so I think the boys are coming on a ton. Bobby Moncur, I know, wants to have a little uh, word with one or two of the lads there. Bob? Well, I'd like to say to Joe and the rest of the lads, first of all, thanks very much for putting up such a good show so far. And what I would like to ask you is, after you qualify by beating Yugoslavia, and I may get some stick off the panel about that, but that's the way I feel, who do you fear most after, uh, as I say, beating Yugoslavia and you qualify, who do you feel are the big dangers regarding going on in the, in towards the finals? Who are you asking, Bobby? Joe? Joe Jordan. Joe, Joe Big Joe. Uh, well, I fancy uh, Holland. They're a very good team. And also Poland. They're the two teams that have impressed me so far in the competition. I think uh, Holland will be the big danger. Holland? Holland. Yeah. Well, I'm bound to say, Joe, that was my tip from the word go in any case. So, uh, Good choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Derek Dugan. Well, uh, Joe, I, I'm actually mesmerised. I feel that um, you and Peter Lormers had this uncanny understanding and considering Peter is an, an orthodox right winger, how's this come about, Joe? It's really marvellous how it's coming off for you, both of you. Well, I've, uh, I've been at Leeds for uh, three and a half years now, and uh, me and Peter have uh, played uh, together and uh, also in training. And uh, I think it's just uh, 
just experience, you know, Peter. I know the way Peter plays and he knows how I play. It's just been teammates uh, with the club as well. Joe, it's a marvellous opportunity. You've now established yourself, really, as possibly one of the best centre-forwards. In fact, you've been quoted in this morning that the press have said you're the best centre-forward out there in Germany. Uh, do you think this is going to be a big threat to um, Alan Clark and Mick Jones next year for a permanent place? Uh, <laughs> well, I was... Uh, I'll leave that up to Mr Revy. He's, uh, he picks a team and... Uh, uh, I'm going to start off the, this season the same as I did last season as uh, going for the number nine shot. Joe, I don't think anybody would disagree with the tremendous form you've shown, but I know Paddy Creran is very keen on David Harvey, and in fact he chairs our panel when they choose the all-star team, and both times David Harvey's been the outstanding goalkeeper, right Pat? Yeah, because you've, played very, you've done very well in both matches, David. One of the things, have you seen very much of Yugoslavia, did you just see the game on the television against Brazil the other night when they played? Yeah, we've seen that. We've seen that twice. I think we saw it live and then we went to Frankfurt to see the game. Is there any particular players on the team that you're a little bit afraid of, David? And, well, I, I don't mean really afraid, but that would um, worry you a little bit. Well, I would show respect to all the forward line and the midfield players. They all seem capable of uh, coming through and scoring goals, but uh, yeah. mainly I think it's the tall centre forward and the outside left there, the yeah. two that seem to provide most of the danger. Yeah. Thanks very much, David. Mm. Malcolm? Billy Bremner. Billy, um, I saw Yugoslavia play against Spain and I saw them play against Brazil on the television. I, I was over there when they played against Spain and I think that Oblak really made them tick. And I wondered if you would put uh, maybe David Hay to mark him in the match. Well, we haven't, yet. we haven't really discussed this yet, you know, and it's, uh, it's up to the manager what he decides to do uh, to, tomorrow. We, we discuss the Yugoslavs tomorrow. Obviously, we, the manager will have an idea how he's going to... Uh, uh, Mark or Black because obviously he's one of the danger men alongside the other and so Yeah, he, he really makes them tick, Bill. Yeah, he's a good little player, yeah. Great but little I, player. I felt that they have one fault, one very, very bad fault when I saw them play, that when they're attacking, you'll find that Joe Jordan and, and uh, Peter Lorimer will get plenty of space, you know, if they just drift away from the defenders because they're inclined to ball watch and watch the game. And this happened against uh, England and also against Spain. Were the central defenders? Mark? Yeah, the, cent the central defenders. You, you, the England players found lots of room you know, when uh, balls were played early from midfield or early from the back to, uh, to uh, either of the strikers. Yeah. And I think if Joe and Peter are really aware of this situation, you know, they, might be, they might be able to make, yeah. take advantage of it. Very good point. See, we, we, you can't really tell that watching it on television, you know. And we've only seen the Yugoslavs on television, and that was against Brazil. We've seen that game twice, but you can't really tell who's doing the running off the ball and, and how their defensive setup is, you know. Dilly. But, yes, Dilly. Barry. Two years ago, you played over in Brazil against Yugoslavia, didn't you? That's I right, Pat, believe yeah. there's nine of their team still playing now. Did all black play then? I played then, yeah. Well, there's nine of them, and you were, you were, I don't know if most viewers know, but you were beating them 2 1 until Willie Morgan missed a penalty, and then they got an equalised in the last few minutes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I think they'd be a little bit apprehensive about you as well. Oh, they're apprehensive because they, are, they know, Paddy, that if they get beat, then they're out of the tournament. They can pack yeah. their bags and away yeah. home, like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me have a word with David Hay. Do you hear me, David? Yes, Brian. Uh, we had the biggest Barney of all time on this panel about a two or three nights ago when Jackie Charlton and Derek were arguing about an, what uh, Jackie thought was an over-the-top tackle by Pereira of Brazil on you. Derek felt that it wasn't an over-the-top the tackle, that it's the sort of tackle that he might face every week up at Molyneux. Maybe you could be the adjudicator and tell us who was right. No, I didn't go over the top, but what I actually did was, I mean, I played the ball past him and just stood there going, like, can I run into me? But it was a pretty hard tackle, Brian. I'm so delighted. It, it didn't actually go over the top. <laughs> David, I'm delighted you said that because I, I thought it was blatant obstruction. Right. He went in, into you and he hit you on your chest. And mm -hmm. I actually tried to explain this to Jack, but Jack stuck to his gun and said it was over the top. No, you but were right, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. You just won me a bet. Jackie Charlton's <laughs> looking for you, David. Could I come back <laughs> to, to us? <laughs> <laughs> Could I come back to Billy? Um, we also had another discussion, Billy, about your sort of little feud uh, that was going on with Revelino. Was it like that, Billy? It seemed that way, this little feud that you and Revelino had on this marvellous game with Brazil and uh, during the week. No, well, not, re not really, Derek, you know. He was... Uh, see, we intended marking him and uh, Paulo Caesar. We, we felt they were the two danger men, mostly, you know. We, we, we felt if we crowd them out all the time, uh, then uh, we'd cut 50% of the danger away from us, you know. But and then uh, I think they had the same intentions with me, like, you know. They thought uh, yes. they marked me out of the game, like, you know. And I think this is what they tried to do. They tried to upset me early on by uh, by coming in very hard from the back. Especially, I don't know if you've seen it so much on telly, but yes. I, I thought more Piesa, the the Wilson Piesa boy. I thought he did it more than Revelino, you know. 
Whenever the little fellow was near me, he, he had a go like a little rebel in him. Billy, were you, surpri were you surprised how physical they were, Billy? Were you surprised how physical the Brazilians no, were? No, no, not really, you know. Because I think that in the past it's always been ten away from them. I think they've always been quite physical. Uh, been able to play football, but still physical at the back. But it's always been overshadowed by the brilliance of Testeo and Gerson and Pelly and that, you know. But I think they've always been a very solid team at the back. Billy, the most wonderful thing to come out of this, uh, uh, for Scotland's point of view, in fact, uh, you're representing Britain out there in Germany, has been that you had a lot of knockers and a lot of controversy the 10 days previous to the World Cup, but your form has been absolutely superb. Do you think this has stimulated the team as a whole? Yeah, I think so, because we, we had, a, we had a, a lot of people to sicken, you know, and uh, we've stressed this in the dressing room just before we go out that we have a lot of people to sicken. A lot of people will give us stick, undue stick, I feel like, anyway. And uh, we've got, a, we've got a, a point to prove to them, not only to them, but to everyone in Great Britain, because, let's face it, we're over here to do a job for Great Britain and for British football, so therefore we want to play to the best ability and to be a, a good ambassador for British football. Billy, there's a very important minute, question Derek, to Derek, all of you. Just a minute, Derek, 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 Billy, do you mean the press mainly when you say that about people that give you a bit of stick? Do you mean the press mainly? Yes. They went the a press, bit strong at times, yeah. The, the press mainly, Paddy, you know? Yeah. yeah. That, that's a, that's well, we got a story here yesterday, actually, but Willie, Willie Orman said that, you know how the press can be misquoted so often? They said that Willie Orman was over there with the Scots lads and they were playing for Scotland for the people in Scotland and for no one else. Yeah. But you feel you're playing for Britain out there, Billy, and that's, uh, that we're great to hear it because there's a hell of a lot of people south of the border who are 100% behind yeah, you well as well. Yeah, well, is, this is how I feel, Brian. You know, I feel, I feel that we're here for Scotland. You know, first and foremost, I think we should have our own, own national anthem out here, out here anyway. Yeah. You know, I think we, they, they should play something uh, appropriate to, for Scotland. Uh, but I think there's a lot, an awful lot of people, I know a lot of my friends are rooting for Scotland back home, you know. So therefore, I think I'm, I'm representing Great Britain, you know. Billy, the $64,000 question really is, I mean, we all believe that Scotland can get a victory tomorrow night. Do the Scottish camp really believe this? That they yeah, can get it? Yeah, we believe it. I mean, we, we're so confident it's not true, Derek. I mean, like, I say, like I've said earlier, Derek, if I didn't think I could win the World Cup, I wouldn't be sitting here. Yes. I'd be in Mallorca somewhere. Well, so the way, know, the, Billy, Billy, the way you played the other night, I thought you were absolutely brilliant. And I'd like to congratulate you and the Scottish team. You know, you really gave us some great football, and I hope you do it tomorrow. Thank you very much. Let me let's come to David Harvey again, because we haven't seen. We've, we're flickering through the pictures out there, lads. We do see you from time to time there, and here we are. We can take a shot of David Harvey there, maybe. David, do you think that game that, that you where you thrilled us so much with those saves against Brazil might have been your best game for Scotland? Um, possibly. Yeah. Um, sorry, he's, he's getting a bit hazy now. Um, you still? Yes, I'm listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're seeing you and listening to you. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, we got a break or two against Brazil. You know, um, the boy had a good chance uh, late in the second half to substitute. Uh, he lost control, and uh, had he stuck that way, I don't think we'd have been uh, playing tomorrow, really. D uh, Joe, Joe Jordan, what, what is the form between now and the, and the game tomorrow? What are the plans for the team so that all Scottish fans know exactly what you're doing between now and kickoff tomorrow? Well, uh, we'll have an L&A tonight and then uh, tomorrow morning we'll have uh, a run through the Yugoslavian team and then we'll have a pre-match meal and then it's on the road to the stadium. David, excuse me, but can I just yeah. speak to David here a second? Okay. David, we've yes. got great po reports, I'm not talking about you in particular, but we've got great reports here about Jim Holton. How has he been doing, Jim? <laughs> 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 Whose house is he haunting at this <laughs> moment? <laughs> He's doing quite well at the Scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> But we're getting great reports about him that they're, most of the people over there are a little bit frightened of him. I don't know whether it's looking at him or whether it's his ability to play or not. Well, Jim's been playing well, everyone else, Paddy. Yeah. There's been no, nobody playing it. There's but a nice little really? rhyme going around about him, isn't there? The six foot two, eyes of blue, big Jim Holton's after you. <laughs> You're aware of that as well. No, he has, Paddy. He's, been play he's played absolutely magnificent, you know. Uh, mm. he, he did the job the other night there, absolutely brilliant, because in, in the first 10, 15 minutes, Martin went away, uh, we had Martin, yeah, Mark and Jarzino, you know. We thought that, yeah. yeah, and then after 10 minutes we realised it wasn't working, that Jarzino was taking him deeper, deeper and out yeah. right, you know, going yeah. right more. 
and leaving Jim. Big Jim on his own. Yeah, and it, it wasn't working yet. Big Jim coped for that 10 minutes, you know, before we changed it, and he, he, he was magnificent, you know? Billy, what about his little bit of skill the other night? What went wrong? Did he take a brainstorm or something? <laughs> Died a death. He's been <laughs> practising that for weeks now, he has, you know, and he says, that that's my big opportunity against the Brazilians to show them a bit of my stuff, like, you know? Billy, on a serious note there, um, there's only one player that seems to be worrying all of us back here, and the lad seems to be trying so hard to get out of this rut that he seems to be in, Kenny Del Gleis. Um, we all hope that he comes good on this very important match against Yugoslavia. Has it been too worrying for Kenny? His form? Well, the boy hasn't showed it, Derek, you know. He hasn't showed it uh, to us, you know, off the part like, you know. But, but the, the, boy, the boy, I think he's played very well. You know, I thought he played very well the other night particularly, you know. But uh, I think possibly we expected too much of him because obviously Kenny is a tremendous player and he's going to be a tremendous player for years and years to come, you know. The re the but I, I think he was built up so much, Derek, back home, you know, I think that Derek. you're probably let down a little bit with the fact that, you know, Kenny's playing well, but you probably expect him to play brilliantly, you know. Yes. David Harvey, if I can come to you, it would appear there's only you and me not speaking here. <laughs> 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 if I can come to you, David, it's, I don't know what it's like at your end, but it's impossible at this end to get a word in. <laughs> and what I'd like to say, you all look nice and relaxed. Now, you know, I've never been over training in Germany. What's it like, what's facilities like when you're not training? What, is there any golf courses, is there any squash courses, uh, squash courts? Is there anything you can do to fill your time in? Because you must have so much time when you're not training. You know, I know what it's like. What have you got there? Is anything, tell us about Germany and the hotel you're staying in. Well, the hotel itself is very comfortable and um, we get very good service. We're well looked after. Um, we don't leave the, the hotel very much. I think we've only had about uh, one or two trips into Frankfurt for a bit of shopping. Uh, most of the time we just sit about and, as David said, we've played Scrabble, table tennis, tent pinball, and all these types of games we've used to fill at the time. And, You've no swimming pool or a squash court? Yeah, so we've uh, a sauna and a swimming pool, which we go in quite often. That's why you're looking nice and healthy, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, Billy, over here we've got the most unpatriotic Scotsman on. Oh, well, how can you sit and say that? that. <laughs> well, <laughs> Billy, I'll tell you something. He got sent a tartan bonnet by an English lady. And I, I'll tell you, I've put my neck out twice. I nearly hit Jack Chan one night because he was giving you a bit stick. And he gets out in a tartan bonnet. <laughs> and I've been getting a stick. And believe me, I'm the one that's back you. Never mind what they say. I've said you'll win. As I will think you will win against Yugoslavia. Never mind they're doing good. David yeah, Hay. Yeah, Come on, man. David Hay. David, yes, what man. about the Scottish fans that are out there? Have they, have they been uh, very good? And, oh, that's uh, tremendous. And they're, they're the greatest good. fans in the world, Brian, you know. I don't think you get any better fans in the world than them. It was very evident in the game against Brazil that they were really making themselves heard. That well, must act great. as a tremendous stimulant for you. It's well. a great, great encouragement for the lads. Has, has there been any problem over the security aspect of it, where you're so tightly guarded? Has that restricted you or got you in well, edge in any way? If you could turn the cameras away from them, you would see all the people who are watching us. You know, there's no problems as far as that goes, Brian. David, if I could just ask you, we got a story in the press today that there was a couple of Scottish players threatened by particular uh, by the IRA. IRA. Uh, so we heard. Yeah. I think it was Wally Orman who was saying this, so we couldn't <laughs> get out. Jim <laughs> Holden. I must say, you look very, very relaxed, and we've caught a few fleeting glimpses of you, and it's been marvellous to do that, and I hope you're feeling relaxed. Can you tell us honestly, you, you all four obviously feel that Scotland are going to win tomorrow? Yes. No question about it, Brian. And Brian, could I just say to, yeah. the, to the people at home, that there'll be nobody trying harder than the lads out here, and... Uh, if we can do a big turn for them, then we'll do it because the boys all feel that, you know, if anybody deserves a lot of success, it's the Scottish people because they've been in the doldrums for so long. And uh, just to say that the boys will be given their 100% over here. Billy Bramner, that's a great little message that I'm sure will cheer up everybody in Scotland and we shall all be rooting for you. Uh, so there we are, we've had our four great Scots that we've enjoyed talking to, Billy Bremner, David Hay, David Harvey, Joe Jordan, and we hope that you have all the success possible tomorrow. Just a reminder, of course, that you can see the whole of that game, Scotland against Yugoslavia, live on ITV tomorrow. We begin the build-up at 3.10 in World of Sport. The match kicks off at 4. Hugh Johns as commentator, Sir Alf Ramsey with his comments as well. The panel will be back as well. We're sorry the pictures were a little bit flickering from uh, Germany tonight, but I think the message to all Scottish people was bright, bright, bright indeed, and let's hope it stays that way tomorrow. And now from all of us here, goodbye. <laughs>